All right, we have made it. It's been a long journey to this point, but we are at the grand finals here for the North American qualifier of the Fallout Gaming Major All-Stars Tournament, and we have gone to a full game number five stretch. Yesterday we had full three-game stretches across the board for both of these teams, and it just doesn't nice. get any easier. Seems like both teams just kind of an an have an answer for each other, and more weight could be on the draft itself. So without further ado, let's just get things underway. I'm Kyle Guy bringing you the coverage. I got Blaze and Cardota back again. Blaze, they look to open up this go-around. You know, no surprises. E-Hug want to make sure after game number one they keep that Wisp banned. But this time, Fire Dota are going to be snagging up the Bat Rider for Demon. And E-Hug, they get their Lion and they get their Axe. Radiant yeah, and the Axe was down. actually a really big force in the last game. The landing phase, a little lackluster. He seemed uh, not to have the exact position he wanted to across the map, but after it was clear what they wanted to accomplish with with objectives and with early fights, yeah. he was able to accomplish a lot. I mean, you're able to counteract the Dazzle Giant and the Lone Druid quite down. effectively with this hero because uh, the reason that you pick up Radiance on the Lone Druid is because the bear can then walk out of your attack range and still go ahead and push our creep waves with the aura emanating. But you just can't confidently do that against an axe. It's like moving with visits familiars. It's remaining. gonna get picked off with the taunt. So yeah, we taught that multiple times over. Brax Five just didn't feel very comfortable remaining. there and I hope they do go for a different strategy. For now, Demon's opening up with the Bat Rider. Clockwork will not time. be mentioned for the entire first phase and I think that might be a first for this matchup. And we'll have to see if they're going to get the same fortune with this axe, something we didn't see from the first couple of games, but did work out, like you said, very nicely there for Ehug. Brew is going to be the grab here. Brax definitely had some success with it, I believe, in game number two. So we'll have to see what Ehug wanted to do to respond to that. They had already one time already grabbed up something like your Skyrath Mage as a direct response to try to really bully him back. Witch Doctor is kind of one of the other go-tos as a secondary support option, but more than likely it's something that Trough is going to have to look to get for himself here. As far as the next banning phase, Fire Dodo, they get rid of that Vengeful Spirit as a Bat Rider counter option, even though they already do have the Lion there. And then the Earthshaker as well with its long-range initiation and, of course, anti-gank potential. E-Hug removed the potential for Fluff getting his precious jungling Chen, and now they think a bit here as far as what the next option will be, and they will indeed remove Radiant the Skywrath Mage. So we'll see if E-Hug decide very well to indeed go for something like the Witch Doctor as their secondary support option or not. I think that Slark is a huge pick here. I think if the Team E-Hug is able to get their hands on it, if Fire Dota does abandon it out here, remaining. this could be what sets the tone for the rest of the game. You are can do so much work against Bat Rider Five and Brewmaster on this hero, and I'm actually terrified what it can be done in, in his hands in particular. Axe is a great counter to it, but on the same team, they can do a lot of work of just ganking constantly and kind of controlling the opposition. So I think that Slark is <sighs> the pick. I mean, I've said that a couple times and we have seen it Dyer come into play one way or another on either side. So I think that's, that's what we're looking at. But you could always look into the Morphling. It's still going to be on the playing field and is pretty good against Batrider as well. Beastmaster banned, but it's on the side of fire. We've only seen Beastmaster once today, and that Ten was, I believe, in game remaining. number one for fire, and it was unsuccessful. So Five this seems to remaining. be... Interesting to me, Blaze. I wonder if it's as a precaution to something they're playing on grabbing time. up for themselves. Is there anything you could think of that Beastmaster would be like the go-to answer as far as you know per permitting someone to allow allow them to get something now that Beastmaster's off the field? I know he's got tremendous uh, presence in being able to scout out the map with his summons, and then also, of course, he's great against any sort of BKB-dependent heroes. It makes me believe that well, I guess they're assuming. They're going to go for some sort of BKB carry grab for us. Is that safe to assume? It just I feel like I'm caught off guard with the Beastmaster ban. Yeah, I'm caught off guard a little bit by it too. I mean, obviously Fire used it very successfully with the uh, Wisp Tiny Draft, but this is a completely different playing field. And I would have to say that, yeah, they're probably going for a hero that can be uh, singled out a little bit too easily. It can just be disabled, remaining. put on lockdown, and have a really hard time with things. So they could be looking at, I don't know, Weaver is an old remaining. one to be picked up. Lifestealer used to be the hero that always got countered by Beastmaster, but that's a hero that barely He's exists anymore. Um, I would have to say, yeah, something like a Gyrocopter or a Dusa could be having a hard time against it as well, and it's just overall something they don't want to play against. They want Ush to be involved. They want him to be active, and they want him to be able to accomplish a lot this game. We'll have to see what hero they give him to do such a thing. 
mid lane options are still there for both sides. Uh, Infinity had been one to always pick up something like the Viper, and I believe it's a matchup he's done before against Ten something like the Brew, remaining. if that is going to be the case. Plus, a Shadow Fiend is still there and available. Five Troll, remaining. another thing, just throwing out casual names as far as big <laughs> top priority grabs, but it's going to be again Radiant the Ancient Apparition pick. here, picked up for Ehug and for Trouf. This time, Fire Dota better think twice before grabbing up something like a Dazzle or any sort of potential defensive healing hero for Fluff. Yeah, uh, there's so much potential with the Ancient Apparition line to bring people low very quickly. Uh, you go in the laning phase, chilling touch, and uh, your stuns, and you're able to drop people down quickly. We've even witch seen aggro doctor. tries work really well in that capacity, but Dying you're not going to go aggro against a Witch Doctor. This defensive support, you've talked about him a decent bit, but this guy can do some real work in the fights. I mean, the healing over time will be negated by the ice blast when it comes into play but overall he's going to be fueling the push mm -hmm. and uh building up a lot of early momentum another really nice thing about this hero is a short cooldown i mean if you look at the ultimates right now you've got a 90 second cooldown at most on lasso your brew split is uh starting at 140 and your death ward is only at 80 so every two minutes or so they could take a team fight at full capacity Five and this is actually going to be very important against a morphling because they have to stop his farm Radiant they probably assume the morphling is coming into play pretty soon and there's the quick pickup ush to respond with the anti-mage and uh, as we were talking about a hero that might be having some issues if he does get disabled too hard. Oh boy, okay, well to round out our fifth game you couldn't have asked for two bigger titans. It was Ehug who closed out their best of three yesterday with a remaining. flawless play from Yawar and his Morphling, but we're also going to be treated to Ush Radiant on his anti-mage. These are two serious, nerd-sweaty kind of a heroes that need to build <laughs> up a wealth of farm to be a real dominant force in the late game. We could be in for the long haul, Blaze, with the draft we're already seeing at hand here. Potential action towards the mid lane. you got space creators in both Axe and Lion remaining. and even AA who are looking to kind of make the action happen. For Fire Dota, they got Five the Brew. Batrider, remaining. obviously, once he gets his blink online. And, of course, Witch Doctor is happy to get the party started. And both of these teams are just hoping that Reserve when it time. goes towards the final curtain of game number five, their big hitter, whether it be uh, Morphling or Anti-Mage, are going to be the ones to carry him into the promised land. Pick. But we still need to finish this out. We need a mid laner or potentially Infinity's grab here for E-Hug. And on the side of Fire Dota, it looks like we're going to need Fluff's secondary support. Or at least just the second support for Mad. Yeah, I think this one will go late. And I wouldn't have it any other way, man. I mean, we've been here all the way through uh, from the qualifiers beginning. And now here we've got Game 5 of Best of 5. Remaining. If it's a nail-biter down to the 60-minute the mark, that is... Perfectly fine Five by me. It's getting a little remaining. late, but man, this is this has been some great days of Dota, and I am looking forward to closing it out in style here. Manta style for anti mage, maybe for more fling, but uh, yeah, I mean it's a pretty awesome matchup to see between these two heroes. Obviously, we've seen it plenty in the past. Ti one and two was actually pretty prominent. Morphling versus anti mage. The anti mage burns a lot of mana, which Morphling uses to survive for a very long time. But you also have to consider the fact that the replicant will negate a lot of the anti mage's presence because he's going to get mana burned by the mana breaker. One of his allies is at the very least. So it's a pretty Ten scary hero for E-Hug to deal with. They have to make sure they build right on UR and they Five give him a really good remaining. overall well-rounded laning phase. So they're going to kind of have a pretty good matchup with the Puck Reserve going against time. Brew. The silence is really good. Potentially creating some openings with the Blink Silence onto the anti-mage. Following that up with Hex or the Call. We could definitely see some kills on Ush here and that would definitely... Yeah give you our more opportunities to outpace him and farm. There's so much lockdown, so much CC that's already there for Ehug to, to hold someone like Ush in his place. Would you consider something like a support silencer here for maybe Fire Dota, so not allow Ehug to be able to easily chain together all this potential lockdown and team fight? Or, because you need some sort of support backup here, not one to really bring in extra sustain with someone like AA, but I don't know, silencer seems to be one that jumps out to me, but it's going to be the Rubik, so... Rubik, obviously, there's fair options out there between Puck and Lion, and you know even the AA if he manages to snag the Ice Blast. But hey, Morph, no, hey, you, Morph. You, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was about to say you you've gone through the list, but this is the yeah. counter pick. I have been hyping this six, since 6.83 hit. Rubik stealing Morph allows him to get 
this incredible HP pool. And if he just picks up anything with a chainmail, a medallion of courage, he suddenly has a ton of effective HP. The null field passive scales well, so he becomes this beastly tank you can't bring down. And then if he ever steals adaptive strike, he has this gigantic stun on his hands. The spells of Morphling are be even better in the Rubik's hands than in the Morphling's hands for the most part. So it's it's gonna be scary if Fluff can really pull this one off. He is the counter pick you look for. I mean, AA is really good because you Ten stop the morph. Remaining. ET used to be really solid because the natural order is great against stat dependent Five agility carries, remaining. but this Rubik could really be the game breaker. We'll see if that's the case here. Fluff will have the wits about him to get things rolling to take it right back to you are on that morphling but we've already know that this kid is an all-star when he gets a hold of this hero that Prepare would without question say based on all the games i've casted from you are when he plays this hero this is the one this is his signature kind of a hero move over lakels it's now all about the morphling you are so with that ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it's game number five for the north american qualifier winner moves on and goes to the land in malaysia the loser the road ends here in the fallout gaming majors so without further ado it's my pleasure to bring you the introductions radiant right side it's fire and we got us who's gonna be playing your late game core anti-mage we got Magka, also known as fucking mad he's gonna be playing your witch doctor along the bottom we got fluff who's gonna be playing your rubik we got Brax back on his Brewmaster, and that leaves their offlaner, Mr. Demon, a.k.a. Jimmy, the Red Bull sponsor. He's going to be playing your Batrider, but we got an early skirmish coming out here, Blaze. The hug is already on the prowl. No real jungle heroes, but they would love to get that early first blood. Taking a page out of the Leviathan book with this, the five-man smoke. They got the level one fight potential with that chilling touch. They get a hold of someone. It could be quick work. Yeah, they waited for a while on the smoke, so it's still not dispelled, but it did take them a little bit longer to get to that position. They didn't get the movement speed buff for as long. Now they're hiding out. Radiant Observer, they don't see it right now, and the Hex Opener could be the death the of the Anti-Mage, but he plays it safe for the moment, doesn't go for the Banner Rune, knows oh, that he oh has absolutely no knowledge of the enemy position, and uh, he knows how frequently I like to go for that aggro play. I just like almost foresaw like a, a terrible scenario where he's blinks towards the rune like oh I'm just gonna go grab that rune <laughs> and he blinks yeah. right across the full e-hug team and hands over an easy first blood but he plays it very hesitant and very safe nerves could be a thing here I wouldn't be surprised if we see a flub here and there with so much at stake but look at Matt he is taking position in the mid knows what you are is up to does not want to allow him to get the early access to some of those CS in gets the secondary bounce on the cask and this allows for a lot of early damage in on a hero who temporarily only has two shared tangos and he has to use one of them. This is a really nice head start for Brax in the mid lane. I actually think that if the Brewmaster had skilled up the Thunderclap there, then the Morphling would have been forced to waveform or die, and that's a, a really bad way to start off the laning phase. But in the end, he's still going to be able to just pull in some tangos and get some support from the Lion. We've got an aggro duel down bottom. It's actually going to be against Usha's anti-mage, uh, Trouth on the Ancient Apparition, MJW on the Axe, and they're going to be causing him some real grief. It's just a, a bit of magic damage here. He doesn't have the spell shield yet, so it ticks pretty heavily, and... He's going to need some support. I mean, right now we do see Fluff is up top, uh, messing with Infinity, and uh, in the mid lane, of course, we are talking about fucking Mad. So, yeah, it's an interesting landing position. e -Hug looking for the try versus try down bottom with the axe, and instead just finding opportunities to suppress us in a different manner. Yeah, the, the two on two happening here for now. I, I wager this is probably going to be played out at least until the two minute mark and the runes pop up, and you can see both sides look to make a big trade happen here. Getting a little bit of lag here. I'm not sure if it's just me or what, but it's a little choppy here, unfortunately. Hopefully it soothes over here in just a moment. It looks like it will, but with that, they make the return back. It looks like Fluff could be coming in from behind. Is welcome with the Ryu's Earth Spike stun. Telkinesis though does throw him back in. The Hex on to Brax. They want to finish him off. They get their first blood. It goes to Fluff. Rotation comes in from Trout. And now Mad is going to try to heal the hell out of everyone with that Voodoo Restoration. Now they consider a turn back onto Yawar. Bullying him back a bit, and they're able to walk straight into a bounty room. So it could be a good grab for them. And with that, it's it's Fire who strike first in this game. Yeah, it's actually quite surprising there. But the first blood comes out in their favor. Now my question is, is this worth the fact that Ush has one CS? Denied. I'm not so sure. First blood is great. Getting kill momentum on Fluff is going to be huge. But Antimage has such a hard time. He is actually pulling the creep wave away from the axe, so he doesn't get spun while he tries to get his second of the game. Uh-oh. Nearby, we see Trouth and Mad go toe-to-toe -to -toe here, and Mad is very wounded. Brax is going to be forced to rotate over. 
Petrov has this haste rune, so he can just kind of step back and kind of juke and jive all he wants. But now he crosses past with Fluff. Fluff not looking to get telekinesis. No, he does. Last second, pulls him up and down. But there's still plenty of haste time for Trout to make it all the way back. But yeah, I'd have to agree with you. Ush is not getting the best deal out of this whole lane setup, having such little CS. Now at 3 CS, and Axe on the other side. MJW's at 19 and 8, the best of all across the whole field. So that is a bit scary early on, even though Fire were able to get that first blood. The, the, the development early here is just not looking so good. Now uh -huh. Brax is going to be at his lonesome. But yeah, top, they're making the jump forward. A long orb back and behind here. From Infinity, takes him to the low ground, six stacks, oh, there's the gonna seven. be the seven! He does get it in time, and now he's gonna catch up with him and fly on top! Demon! Able to get a hold of the little fairy at that point, that was just seconds, or milliseconds it felt away yeah. from that stack disappearing. That was so close, uh, it's a completely different situation between a one stack and a seven stack there. Yeah, Demon is able to just barely finish it off the jaunt away. Just didn't get the distance he needed, so really good solo kill. And it, it slows down the Blink Dagger, which is a very important thing, because if this Antivage is having such a hard time, the Blink is going to be his death. They get the call in the mat. He's going to be forced to pull out the heal, but maybe a pathing is making him sidestep quite a bit. The hunger's going to be there. He could be in trouble. Tries to turn back and hide. Only level 5 on MJW, so obviously no dunk, but they finally get a hold of him, and he will go down. So E-Hug are able to put themselves on the board, but Ush... Could find his own kill here, just needs one more auto attack and gets it. So after a slow CS start, he is able to bring in a bit he of a bounty right there. Me. Finding the support grab. MJW though feels pretty confident at this point. He can kind of hold strong in the lane for now. He's just trying to get that level 6 underway. So they're getting some control back over the bottom lane. It's actually really important that they give the last hit to Ush there. Usually it's like, okay, it's a kill's a kill. Who cares who gets it? But in this situation, Ush has been deprived so much that there was a point in the game where the Rubik had higher net worth than the anti-mage. They need to prioritize him getting back in the game, and they need to do it sooner rather than later. So they, they back off the lane for now. They try to go for some stacking, but uh, the big thing here is, of course, this Observer Ward was placed after the zero minute mark. I think it was like 130 or something. So that pole's going to be on lockdown for a very long time. Yep. They do commit a couple of them just on the bottom, which leaves their top lane quite in the dark. Demon on his bat. I mean, Axe is getting a lot out of his off lane, but Demon's right there. And plus, he does have that kill now. So 28 and 6 for him. He's about to get his level 6. He's got 1,300 gold. He's a marvelous timing to finish out a Blink Dagger. Nearby, stacks, not really built up, but he is not going to need a whole lot at this point to really finish what he started as far as farm. So, MJW Blink Dagger is going to be the one to come out before the pucks. Uh, do you see that as just a guaranteed kill on the anti-mage, or, or it just really depends on who's going to be there to follow it up? This is MJW we're talking about, Blaze. For every game yeah. I've seen so far, when he gets his Blink Dagger, he gets his kill. Now, I could cast or curse him on this one, but we'll yeah. see. He's on the hunt right now for Fluff, though. He's getting slowed from the Vortex that keep coming out from the just above. Trout is just being that support player like he is and just beautifully sets up the assist. That's uh, John Stockton going to Carl Malone right there for the dunk. That's Utah Jazz basketball talk for all you uh, non-sports ball fans, but now it's going to be Trouf in trouble. The split comes out and well, I Brax gets the last micro. hit. The Wind Panda judging where Axe is going to maneuver and finding two kills instead of one. That is insanely high level. And they get the second kill. The Rock is going to be there, but the split does end. And, but with Fluff showing up, it certainly does help. Ush is going to need to try to blink ahead, but here comes Ryuza. Steps forward and they get the dunk onto Ush. Oh no, it could be disaster right now for Fire. Brax pops out the clap, able to get the kill there. Has to walk away and salve on up. Ryuza's had enough, so he heads on home. You are looking to kind of come through and maybe catch anyone on the way out, but not going to be so fortunate. He saw the healing salve effect uh, brew when he walked past the Observer Ward, so he was looking for that quick snipe on a Radiant's low HP target, but the safe play attack. from Brax, and he really redeems himself this game. Like, he showed what he can accomplish with this hero, and he's going to continue to do just that. But it, it did cost him the Anti-Mage's life. He felt confident because the mana attack. break had taken all of Axe's mana away, but Brueling spells give magic stick charges, and Axe was able to give himself a fresh 150, so that allowed him to, to make the play happen, and the dunks are pretty real right now. I mean, we have 500 180 HP at most on the two supports, and that means that almost half their life is their dunk range. Almost a guaranteed kill if he's able to blink in and get a hold of anyone, so very scary there for your fire supports. You need to have good position. Ush has now rotated himself towards the mid lane to find the farm there. It looks like now that Brax has found his level 6, he can feel more comfortable maybe working with the bottom lane setup. 
Still needs uh, plenty of time before his split's going to be at the ready once more, but he's just trying to get a hold of that Blink Dagger. And speaking of Blink Daggers, Demon does make a stack happen in the woods. He's going to start barbecuing up some pesky little birds and neutrals, and he'll have his Blink Dagger and a smoke in just a few moments. And with that, he's going to be the one that looks for the kill. And here he goes, right off the base. Where's that smoke at? There it is. got to blaze it up, of course, before you get in there with that lasso and have the rodeo. So with that... He'll head on back and away. We'll see what the target's going to be. And who do you think it should be, Blaze? If you got the options right now to make a jump onto someone, is Yawar just the one to go for? Or do you try to slow the roll and maybe get a hold of Axe before he can get his Blink Dagger? If you only have two heroes there, then Yawar's not the easiest kill. Two points of Strength Morph might be enough to get him out, and it makes it a risky play. I would say it's like a 80-20, but, I mean, it's not a guaranteed kill that he wants. He's still going to make his way there, and as long as I have the third hero, it should be a guaranteed piece, especially with this Maledict doing even more damage. But we'll see. Maybe counter-initiation, but no blinks on E-Hug just yet. Too very close. I and mean, if Puck or Axe had a blink to counter-initiate, that would be a big deal. But they, they actually see that as the threat, and they might go for the Puck instead. Yep. Smoked. They are on the move. Going towards the top area right now, hand-in-hand -hand with Mad. And if Infinity is not careful, he will be in for a rude awakening at any moment here. Will we see it? There's the flight. There's the grab. Red Bull gives you wing. Says he brings him right back into a Maldic. There's going to be the split. Infinity tries to go for the orb. They try to get to one side. He will not go to the orb. and just goes to the side shot. Gets a Blink Dagger. That was going to be he so fun. The oh, they he get him. He sold the TP scroll for the money. Oh. He got the 50 gold he needed to buy the, t the Blink Dagger, and he gets it before he dies. Wow. I have not seen that. I've seen so many buy tactics uh -oh. on mid lane. But mid lane, they're making a go also onto Ush, and Ush is going to be taken down. The dunk won't be there, but still, the job gets done. It's a one for one trade, but taking down Ush is such a bigger grab for Ehug, and now. Man, oh man. But even then, taking down the puck after he invested his gold already is not that big of a deal. So, oh big, big play right there. Craygasm. That is just up. insane. Like, I've seen selling items to buy items. Obviously, that's Dyer's pretty standard when you just need to get an item at a certain attack. point in time. But doing it in the heat of battle at the side shop, now that's that's pretty new. Uh, bottom lane, we're going to see the move in. Brax wants to use that blink and instead the current oh. initiation. Oh. They get the silence right away. Brax is able to get the split off, but he's coiled down. A coil used to kind of keep Brax back. But man, oh man. That Blink coming in to debut. Brax still wants to party here, at least with Trout. He has the Earth Panda out of there, though, just so he can make a clean escape. But they're not letting him go quickly. Oh, Blink forward, Blink back. <laughs> they barely dodge each other on that front. Brax will be able to walk away with his life, but that was an initiation attempt that unfortunately won't work out for him. So, we see some really good movement across the map from Ehug showing what they can do with their Blink Daggers. They, it's two Blinks versus two Blinks. They really had a rat race for who could acquire that initiation tool first. But it looks like the initiation is going to be on fucking mad and the dunks come out quick. Eohar doesn't even get the chance to chaos. Yeah, he's like, come on, man, I'm the Morphling. Let me get the Yeah, kill. actually, it is worth noting at this point in time, Eohar's farm. Actually, he's taking some hits and won't go down, but it is a little risky. Um, but yeah, if you look at the Morphling's farm, like we were talking about how bad of early starts Ush had his first CS, but because of the Drunken Haze play against the Morphling in the mid, it actually turns out that Yuar's not doing too great either. Yeah, so both cores kind of staggering a bit, not off to that clean and easy start. I guess you can give props to both sides on making sure that they can keep the pressure mounted and not allow them to have that easy time as they get ready to go into the mid-game period here. But now Trouf has his level 6, Ice Blast online, fires one towards mid lane, doesn't get the catch right there on that time, but now it's something for Fire to look out for. I mean, they're already pretty squishy as far as supports go, and that Voodoo Restoration might not be the biggest help. It all takes one simple follow-through from especially someone like your Axe to just kind of easily clean up and get some free extra kills under his belt. So, Fluff at the same moment, though, he has his level 6 in spell steal. Let's see if he's able to kind of get a hold of uh, the Morphling. But bottom lane, that's where we're going to see Ush get the kill. But he could lose his own life. Yep, jump in. There's going to be the call and the coil and the dunk. Ush goes down in exchange for Trout, which is a worthy trade for them. And Fluff is going to show up and, well, he's going to be able to steal the orb. Yeah, so not too bad. A great way to start things off is just, uh, obviously, Infinity has put a lot of points into that orb, and that's going to be nice damage, nice movement in the map, and then he could turn it into another steal. So we'll see what he has in store for us. But yeah, us just having a really hard time, and then JW making it worse. There's going to be no, there is going to be done. It does cost a bit of mana, but it is worth the, the thrill. Uh-oh. 
He's not done yet. Doesn't really have the mana to do much about it, but... Top lane is actually a, a Bruce split. Bruce split to commit attack. onto the tower. Trout goes down again, just kind of trying attack. to find some side push. It's two times that Trout was beaten so bad that I didn't even want to show the audience. So it's probably for the better there. But Brax is still able to get some shots in on the tower, and no one's looking to rotate quite yet. Instead, they're looking for their own trade here on bottom, going for the Tier 1. Meanwhile, mid lane, Ush and Yuar, the two late-game Titans kind of go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Relatively attack. quiet otherwise. Here comes, finally, Yuar towards the top lane now to be that one defender, while Ehug are able to secure their Tier 1 tower. Yeah. Before they were Titans, though, they were little kids. So we're yeah. seeing the, the Teen Titans here as they just really don't have farm. They really are lacking the items to get the job done. Eventually they'll get there, but it, it's a long road. In the meantime, we're going to just see flashy stuff from the Ultimates and from the Blinks. That's where really all the action is going to be, and yeah. that'll keep the kill score pretty even. Yeah, when we see one side, Axe get a hold of a little support and make the dunk happen, we should see Jimmy Radiant's respond shortly thereafter on his attack. Bat Rider at least. He actually has managed to throw together. He's top of the net worth also, by the way, at about 6K. He's got the tool belt complete with the Force Staff also on hand here. This could be for an easy isolation play. Even someone like a Morphling would be able to potentially slip away from the far pool he can have. He has eyes potentially on trial from the mid lane, but top is where we can see a skirmish. Smoked up MJW looking to have his eyes on the prize. Fire though waiting in the wings. Uh-oh. Braz could Brax is scouted. They get them both. They get the call. Stun's going to fly out. The finger's going to be there. They're going to get a two-man special. As I imagine, they will finish off mad because of that finger. And, well, they take down two. Meanwhile, Demon does show up. Gets one support as a trade. Evening things at 9-9. Nine to nine. But there's going to be the call. Pull back. Demon going to be in trouble now. Pulled into the silence. Dunk's not going to be enough. Tries to fly up and away, but no. Gets squashed in the end. A three-for-one trade. Advantage for Ehug. I mean, that was that was a really committed die, but they knew that Ush wouldn't get involved. He's just had too hard of a game to really commit to something like that. He's just like, guys, I'm, I'm getting free farm for once. Let's leave it at that. And unfortunately, it does cost fire a lot of lives. All they get is the lion, and it looks like they are going to lose the tier one tower as well. Ehug continue to find more and more across the map, and if it means getting these towers, oh boy, Mad just a little too close. MJW jumps, and they get their kill. And it's Morphling who gets that kill on top of the tower. So you're looking at two Titans who are like Teen Dying Titans or whatever. But Yuar is going through puberty pretty damn fast, Blaze. Yeah. I mean, he has now got plenty of resources. He's already got the Ultimate Orb Void Stone on hand. He's trying to get a hold of what looks like the Lincolns pretty dang fast. Comparing that to Ush, one component away from finishing off his Battle Fury, but that is just a farming accelerator at this point. He will still be pretty squishy. Yeah, so they're gonna ramp up pretty quickly, but I, we're still gonna see like, I mean, there's a lot of support items come into play a lot sooner. I mean, Witch Doctor is just going straight for the Ags Rush, the HF person's going for the Midas, and he has it in a couple hundred gold. Gosh. Gets hit right there with a very nice Ice Blast, and Yuar catches up, and that's gonna be a quick kill. Wow, good formulated game plan for Miha, very impressive. But there's gonna be the return. Yuar gets lassoed up, pushed back. He has no replicate. He pulls out the haste, though, and he is just able to easily walk away. Ooh, devastation there for fire. But man, oh man, Ehug, top-notch play right there. The global mm -hmm. presence of mind to get that grab. Trough leads it off, and they just easily follow through. And that was a lot closer than a lot of people would think. Like, uh, people think, oh, okay, the puck jumps on him, and he's going to be able to make sure that the AM doesn't get away. But he actually didn't get in range for the silence. It was just way too far away. So they actually used a mini stun of Adaptive Strike and a mini stun of the Dream Call, and that's what locked him in place. For the so, actually, oh! quite close call. Top lane, Brax finds another opportunity, and that actually <laughs> will delay the Midas. That's a much bigger kill. Yeah, it, it only takes a clap Dyer's and two quick strikes to finish off the Iceman, Dyer's but top tower hey, has this is Yuar coming into the top lane. Brax is able to blink away, middle so he'll be fine. They just attack. walk away with a nice little support grab, but... Uh, uh, oh, bah, bah, bah. oh my god, Ush gets caught out again. MJW just seems to have his number, and there is nowhere safe for Ush to farm. This is almost going to be putting him potentially into tilt mode at this point. Plus, Yuar gets a tower. You're looking at one side getting a lot more of the game at this point than the other. It's unfortunate for Fire, for but, but Ehug are doing really well. I... I Gotta give a big props here. Now they get smoked up. Jump across. Demon is able to get a hold of Infinity. 
And they get their kill with a flame break to finish it on off. But where they get one support and one little mid laner, they lose their Ush again and again and again. So the trades just don't always seem to work quite to their liking. Yeah, I mean, looking at it, I'd say, like, okay, Ush dying uh, one more time for his fourth death there. I was like, you know, he's they already know the state of the game is they're going to be playing catch up with him. That he's going to just try to create opportunities to get his farm and they're going to be kind of covering him the entire time that wasn't changing with just a third kill or maybe even a fourth kill but getting a fifth kill now oh, he's just dying 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 and it's just going to keep happening link force uh, the dunk now at level two it's really hard for him to survive though he will fi finally find his battle fury it's going to be like a closer to 19 and a half but he will get there it's a slow start Ceiling's there for Anti-Mage. Demon's gonna get well with an Ice Blast. Actually brings him down a little bit, but it's still only level one, so he's gonna be fine. Fire do nice work, though, as they rotate and kind of hit the economy here of E-Hug, taking away a couple of the stacks and the jungle work on their side. As they look to kind of walk out the back door, E-Hug, though, are on the move. They got the awareness to kind of move up through their own side here. It doesn't look like Fire gonna hang around too long. They've already been caught out plenty of times. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, Matt is going to be the greedier support, and he's trying to get that Agnims together as fast as possible. He's leading off with the point booster for now, and he's got about 1k gold, so that's the next component together. It's not too bad a timing, as he does grab the Ogre Club first and foremost, and, well, Blaze, it's Demon Batrider, so he's going to get his boots, of, his boots of travel now as his third item grab. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, he's actually doing really well as far as overall net worth. It could be the play make just to help out Ush, but we do see this jump in onto Fluff and stuff, and he's already in dunk range. Yep. Maybe if he wasn't locked down too much, he could orb himself away, but it's just not going to be happening. And with that, Fire look to split. Brax finds a hole to TP out from, and Demon flies himself home. So they end up just losing their one little Fluff support. At the expense of a full five-man rotation to the top lane from E-Hug, they're going to probably, I would say, turn this into some sort of push, but Daya's it's instead just a lot of space created, I suppose. Mad's going to continue to work with this bottom lane, finding last hits there. Now she's going to be working in the jungle, but E-Hug, man, they continue to find their kills. Not the craziest net worth advantage at this point, more than it would feel. It's only about 3k for them, but the XP is 5k, so that's where it really hurts. Yeah. Now, Yuar has two item builds on his Morphling, generally speaking. Actually, it's going to be a jump in onto him from Demon, who wanted a haste room, but bottled up. It's Yuar to pick it up, and yeah, that's uh, just an annoyance there. But a uh, bottom lane, the hit again, the oh, ice blast, setting up the dunk. And this is, I mean, just so much kill momentum for him. He's going to have a BKB, and he's 9-1-4. and four. Like, These kills are just going to keep rolling, and with it, the heads. Yeah, uh, similar to what we saw, like, Yoki's axe performance in Star Ladder, it was quickly became band worthy at that point when you see it really snowball out of control and MJW kind of channeling a bit of that or at least really impressing with his own that style. That BKB is going to be done in a moment's notice. They feel comfortable enough they actually move themselves into the Roche Pit at this point. If we look over the vision here, they've put in one ward towards the high ground side of fire to see if anyone is approaching. And for the side of fire, well, they don't really have an idea. They are in the dark. So this could be an easy behind-the-back play here for Mihog. It looks like it will be. This Roche is going to be dead. Yeah, this is getting pretty ugly here. You are with an Agency Mortal can do a lot of work here, and he's just going to go for his next item after that. Uh, I was looking at his skill builds and item builds for the hero, since obviously Yoar's Morphling is pretty intense. And the, the two that he goes for are, one is just the Lincoln's E-Blade opener, and then the other one is the right-click build that we saw yesterday. So in this case, he is definitely going for that Lincoln's E-Blade. And we just look at how quickly people can drop this game yeah. as a result of that. Like, we already see how dead the Rubik and the Witch Doctor are if they get caught by AA or Axe. But adding in the actual, like, one-two punch of the shotgun, I don't know if they can survive. Already, if an AA blast lasts, the shotgun's going to help seal the deal. Plus, it sets up for a good dunk. It's just a beautiful formula. They are able to get a hold of Infinity. They bring him back, and they finish him off. They can. There is going to be the double stud coming out. But meanwhile, on the backside, you see you are able to get a hold of Mad. Takes down the Witch Doctor. But they potentially want more here. Fire on the way out. They're waiting for their big badass here, MJW, on the axe to catch on up. He is the Goliath. The David of Fire trying to get the hell away before he does show up. But it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade. Slight advantage there. Fire as they get these picks. 
They do get a little bit of that rubber band, but oh, look at this sweet double stack that Ehug have just taken away. Another strike back mm -hmm. to the economy, and they drop a sentry ward in there. No more farm for you there. I mean, that's the battle for Antibage's staple for getting into the game, getting his Nampus tile. So he's going to have a lot of issues this game. And I mean, obviously, they've only begun. They, we've seen so many different things that the stat of him having the third highest deaths at the 20 minute mark, that's pretty telling of how this game's faring for him and the fact that he can't kind of rebound with any stacks. It just shows that Ehug want to just draw full control on the map. Have you oh, seen this jump man. play? It's, Cancel will not be there, so they don't have flick daggers or anything beyond that of MJW. Yeah, it was a smart call from Fluffy puts the Fade Bolt out onto Axe first so that he will not have his blink in time for it to catch up and make the call happen. Something that I would normally make the mistake of. I would just straight up orb in the woods and then Axe would be right there Dyer's to beat my ass, but Fluff knows the better. Make sure that he will not be able to have that mobility. Makes his clean escape, and Ehug will come up short on that front, but they are still pressuring this top lane. we got Dyer's tier 2s to go through, and we got an Aegis in our pocket, so we control the tempo of this game. Fire have just got to try to stall out. Stall, stall, stall. It was a really, really rough start fortified. here for Ush, and he is just trying to play Dyer's the game of catch-up after completing his Battle Fury. He's only got about 1,400 gold. You're looking at a difference where Ush has 7.7k net worth, while Yawar, he's at top of net worth now, nearly 11k. Brutal. They're all walking by an Observer War that's just outside. I, either is just outside the sentry range or it's outside of Fog of War at nighttime. In either case, they're not seeing it. Their vision is known, their movement is projected, and they're going to go for a counter initiation down bottom. Well, Ush is able to blink away after the blast. Brax is not going to be so lucky, and he is the target, and they take him down. Ehug get their tier two, and they rotate back, and they get the deny. Ehug are just playing out of their minds this game, and they just have their eyes on the prize. A victory here and they secure their trip to Malaysia for the land to represent the America. And, well, if they compete like this, it's certainly well justified. But for Fire, a ragtag bunch of players, they have worked so hard to get to this point, and they do not want to let them have the easy fight. Ush has got the haste rune, so he will not be slowed down from that hex as he migrates himself up to the top lane, just frantic to continue farming up. Yeah, I, I have to say, they are certainly playing like it, that they really want to make this happen, that they are going to go to the event, but we c we'll see. I mean, right now, MJW has picked up his third point in Calling Blood. That means 400 kill threshold, but they are getting some durability on their hands. Witch Doctor are building up X. The first two components are the health ones, so he's almost up to 1,200. At least Dunk is only a third of his health. Rubik, on the other hand, he needs to skill more. Oh, nice jump call as they scout out Demon with that nice ward, and it's another easy kill. Godlike for MJW, the offlane superstar for Ehug. They secure also the tower. More gold as the rich continue to get even more rich. Ehug, control the map now. They have such nice aggressive wards. It's like they're always one step ahead as far as what Fire's gonna do. These two teams, I'm sure, have faced off so much in the past. They might not have faced off a whole lot here in the Fallout Gaming Majors, but there's Canada Cup, there's Dota Pit, there's the Scrims. They know each other very well. And they anticipate how they're going to play. And with wards like this, you kind of get the gist of that. Mm -hmm. And it feels like Ehug are the ones that have kind of just had their number, at least for game number five. Yeah, the wards are so smart. They've been very active about placing those aggro wards. And so far, none of it has been really team warded at all. They have complete map control, even without a gem of true sight to really force that. Now we see in the mid lane, Fluffy stuff going down. Gets a dream coil of his own, but that's not going to... That's just going to be them sleeping easy. Actually, a nice fade bolt. Dropping pretty low. And he will die to the fire. Oh man, oh man, it was very close there. But here comes MJW. He's actually already at half life. It could be a big bounty if they're able to grab it. And with Lasso still there. Meanwhile, Yawar able to yeah, easily bring down Mad, it looks like. But there's going to be the zap. And they are going to be able to finish the lion. So it's a two for two trade. But Yawar getting that kill makes it very, very sweet. He's 4 0 oh, 5. This guy has been flawless on his morphling for how long now? I want to know. Statistically, Cart Dota. How often this kid dies on Morphling? Because it's not very often. It is yeah. probably a number that even Universe would shiver over. He's a guy who doesn't die very often at all, so mm -hmm. it's just ridiculous. Yeah, Morphling has one of the lowest deaths per game in general, yeah. but I think that his is far below average, which in this case is a very good thing. So Ethereal Blade coming out. As soon as he got off the Courier, he found a kill on the Witch Doctor, and that actually is pretty important because the Witch Doctor is building up this Aghanim Scepter as well as finding level 11. When that comes out, they have a chance to bring this back. Without the Agonim Scepter, I'm like, oh, this, there's no chance in hell, unless there's the biggest story you've ever seen. But if the Witch Doctor stays so far back, you, you can't even see him, 
and then comes into the fight after all the spells have been cast, he could devastate with that death ward. Yeah, he could, if maybe. Yeah. I don't know. These are just salt, like slim chances if E Hug happened to just kind of make a flub. But from what we've seen from him so far, they don't flub very often. Blaze, Yawar is not easy to grab a hold of. MJW knows the targets he wants to go for and clearly can execute. He's eleven and one and four. He already has his BKB complete, hasn't even needed to touch it. It's at 10 seconds, and he's got a Shiva's well underway. Noir's average death on Morphling, his four previous games, is 1.3 average deaths on a Morphling. Yeah, he don't die very much. Might as well call him immortal at this point, but ugh. Ryuza, long ball, trying to get a hold of us here. He actually might walk into it. Gets hit, but he's already too far, so he will make his way out. Ush, trying to be the one to bring it back here for fire, has his ultimate orb, but... 2k gold in reserve, still pretty far behind. About full luxury items worth, 4 5k-ish of Yawar on the other side. Thank you. So, we're just going to be seeing a delay of game for fire. They need to hold the position. They need to get the anti-mage up to 3 a.m. He's very close to that. And so far, Eog have actually kind of drawn back a little bit. They did one good shotgun combo. They had a nice little skirmish on mid. And since then, it's been quiet. And while that doesn't seem like that's been that much time, in just a couple of minutes, if that indicates any kind of reluctance to end the game now, fire definitely have the chance to bring it back here. Uh, there's more and more opportunities. The Batrider could invade the pit, which just seems to be what they're waiting for. They seem to be waiting for Roche, and while that's wise in general, if Fire can get the vision they need to, they might be able to contest or snipe it, and that would make things more difficult for Ehug. Makes you wonder that back during the drafting phase, Fire, if they maybe second-guess their Beastmaster ban and consider just getting rid of the Morphling to make oh, sure fucking you are with Goodbye. There we go. All flies through. Boom! Shot right in the face! You are! Gets the easy clean grab, 5-0 for him now. 2K golden reserve after already having that shotgun plus Lincoln's. And, plus and on the other side, ooh, quick snap. Ush blinks himself up and away, but they see where he is. Cold feet's there, and with that, he gets dunked on. Now also a godlike streak for MJW. Plenty of bounty out there for them to get, but can they get it? There just seems to be no way to break through this tough shell of an E-Hug defense. They just seem to always be controlling the game. Wherever they go, it's a fight that they've started or they've engaged in. And it's Fire just trying to find farm and maybe make it out with their lives. Yeah, in this position, I mean, you got the Chief's Guard coming out for the Axe. You also have the Aghanim Scepter finally coming out for Trelf at level 11. A good time for it. And there's the Ice Blast flying away. So there was actually a close call with UR, almost bringing down the Rubik. But uh, we're going to see lots of them yeah, he brings it towards Brax. Brax gets the clap, and they are able to finish up Ryuza. They take down the little support line, committing just the lasso for it. Shotgun takes Brax down to half-life. He's going to be forced to pull out the split as Puck almost got there with the silence. Now he puts his focus towards the tower. Meanwhile, Batrider, Demon, able to get a hold of Trout there, taking down the Ancient Apparition, but we're going to keep eyes on mid as they're going to make a hunt onto Brax and his little Earth Panda. Oh, my God, where the hell am I going to go to get away from this one? MJW gets the call. And he is just desperate to run away. Oh. Blink's going to be there. So he's able to sidestep for now. Yules, though, catches on to the Witch Doctor, and Brax makes it out alive. Woo. Too close for comfort on that one. And at the end of it, Fire, hey, they walk away with two support kills, and they lose no one. Yeah, that was actually a really close call, though. I think they should have been able to cancel the Brewmaster's Blink Dagger, but Brax gets a little lucky there and just hammers that key home, so he will survive. It's actually a nice steal from the Rubik picking up an Ice Blast. It's not axed up for him, but it's still extremely valuable and can really make things difficult for the Morphling, who's running full Agi at this point in time. We're going to see it used to scout the pit here, although it does debuff Lion. It doesn't really accomplish too much this time around. So now E-Hug. Still not too worried. They don't lose a whole lot, a couple of supports, which does feed a bit of that rubber band towards fire. Oh, top lane, I see the back end of it. It's Fluff, easily getting isolated from Yawar. It's just an assassination, really nothing you could do at that point. Simple waveform forward and a shotgun blast, and your Rubik. Doesn't matter what kind of no feel you got, you're dead. So he gets dropped. Yawar now moving on 6 0 and 5. With that, Mantis style. <laughs> Apparently, on Ush and his anti-mage. All right. Yeah. That's a, he's been rocking the cosmetics since minute one, but uh, yeah. That's, that's a 32-minute Manta. I want some stats on that. This is just not the timing you're looking for. Finally comes into play. It's the key to victory if they're going to be able to bring this one back. It's just been a long time coming. Finally online. 
now they get to move and you gotta wonder if a d more defensive build could have been better to get him to this position we've seen things like the vanguard crimson guard or vladimir's offering be the items to sometimes be picked up instead of the battle period just to get to the mantis style and i'm not sure how many deaths it would have prevented but i'm assuming one or two looks like they're gonna make a move into the pit for now though at least they got it down to half life fire nearby so here's demon one of the best being able to contest sees frow pulls him up and kidnaps him away from home E Hug are gonna just finish what they started with the Roche. But they at least will get rid of this ancient apparition. But will they walk away from this? They got plenty of mobility to catch up. Brax potentially caught out, has to pop out his BKB. They think about pursuing, but they often said to pull away. So a Roche now acquired here for your war. Top lane though. MJW able to get a hold of Ush as he's trying to split push here. Could go down. The dunk is a little too early. And Ush ends up snapping his own life in the coil. Almost like a noose right there. Infinity gets the kill, and they lose their AM. It would have been decent of a trade, even though considering they're losing the Roche up to that point, but now losing the AM, he has no buyback for 50 seconds. E-Hug can feel pretty comfortable about pushing this mid lane. Yeah, it's actually so rare to see a, a Mantis style go past the 30 minutes after the Battle Fury. We see it actually only in 33 games, and yes, a few of them they have won. So there is some hope. There is some light at the end of the tunnel, but it seems very dim right now. Here they are. It's the E-Hugs group. They taste victory, and they're knocking at the mid lane front door of the fire base. Now they make their jump onto Brax. Brax could go down without even getting a split off. There's going to be the split, but they get the lasso pull back on the line. Take down Ryuza. And the first life of Yawar is going to be expended. Nice high ground start. It does cost them their death ward. Can they get Yawar down? They certainly cannot yet. He's able to wait for him away. Morphs up the strength. Orb that's stolen is going to move on forward. And now they're trying to TP in. Boots of Travel's there with Demon. He is still alive. Get the hell away from me, Ush. Does he adapt his strike? Finally, he goes down. Brax loses his own life. Void flies out from Ush as he cleans up Infinity. And Fire put up a strong defense inside the middle high ground and look to clean up whatever they can. This is turning into a pretty big swing of gold their way the more they take. They get Trouth as well, but the biggest bounty of all is this MJW Axe, man. If they can get a hold of him, that would just be swell. But he is already far away. Demon, though, still on the hunt. He does opt to step off. So, wow, wow, wow. The biggest fight for Fire pretty much all game finally comes at 35 minutes in when they're already down so much. It's a boost. Blaze, is it enough to give them back into this, or is that just... One fight where they're going to need a couple more. Oh, I just spoke too soon. Ush gets caught with the call finger and the stun. Mad, not much he can do here. Drops the Maledic and the cast. Locks him in place. Demon pulls him back. The Maledic curse is going to start stacking up. Ryuza as good as dead. There's going to be the flame break. MJW pops out his BKB and they start going man mode on each other here. Demon wants that bounty. Get the hell over here. He's got to be careful though. He's got two E-Hug members that are about to come back to life. So he will blink and TP home. Man, this has been pretty insane. Before the puck kill even came out, it was a 35 minute gold swing. It's just the three heroes, but then they get a huge amount of experience over 4K, and uh, Rubik looks to be going down here yeah, in the mid lane. Just trying to do something fancy. Uh, coil set up, and they easily just follow it up, tries to go for the TP. He was just there. And Fluff just kind of gets caught trying to push in this mid lane tier one, which is only at 90 life and in deny range. Trough could see it, step back and deny it, but. He's just going to wait for now. Yeah, so as to the question of whether or not that's going to be enough, this is uh, a really difficult position still for fire. Obviously, the golden experience graph the rubber banded pretty hard. Uh, they maybe got about a third of their disadvantage back. Uh, but at this point in time, it really comes down to how the non-carry non heroes play. How Demon is able to farm for the next few minutes. If he gets that refresher orb, that is an item that can pretty much pronounce your late game in either case but uh, the also the witch doctor and his positioning with the death ward last fight it was cleaving on two that's plenty as you're doubling the damage of a very, already very powerful channel spell but yeah we'll see if uh they can continue to make those high ground holds because that's where they have to draw the line as soon as they lose the single lane of racks I, i'd say they're done but never say never uh, at least if you're a fire fan never say never if you're an e-hug fan you're still feeling pretty good at this point Duar finally gets his first scratch on the record, being 6-1. and one. 
but he is still sitting pretty here. Scotty, Ethblade, Lincolns, his tool belt looks pretty damn stacked at this point as he continues to add pressure across all fronts. Top Plenty of split push attack. tactics in his arsenal if he needs to at this point, but he'll just continue to farm up as it stands for now. Trough doing his best, does the ice blast to the top lane to try to slow down fire split push here, but Demon is taking flight now. He has the hook, has been but is not finding an opportunity to maybe make a go onto Infinity. So with that, they pull back, they get their tower, and in the meantime, they're gonna make a jump on the mid lane onto Ush, and they could take him down. Adaptive is there. Does get the Manta off and will be able to blink away. Earn helps him out and he makes it home. One of the few times we've seen Ush able actually to escape from an onslaught like that. Yeah, need the Ice Blast on top to make sure that you can guarantee the kill there. But yeah, it was really close. The Blade coming out as late as possible as Magic doesn't really bother him too much. He's got three points in the Spell Shield out of potentially four. He has the BKB. He can actually survive, and that that is the difference maker right there. That's kind of why I was wondering, maybe like a, even a casual vitality booster, if it could have made a difference maker in the timing of these items coming out. But now he finally has at least enough durability to survive a two-man gank, and he is able to farm pretty quickly if they give him the opportunity to stretch his legs. In the meantime, the Bat Rider doing some funny stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I heard a BKB, and I'm like, what the hell's going on here? And it's Demon in enemy territory, because just not feeling too safe has the has to BKB TP back home. So his charge will be down, now down to seven seconds at this point, as he will help out this bottom lane. The rest of Fire might need to get the hell back here from this top lane set. And that is just pretty deep at this point. He's got a TP scroll, man. You're making yeah. me nervous. Might want to consider using it here. Trouble approaches here. Trough is first on the scene to scout it out, but Ryuza is en route. Surprisingly enough, this lion not able to throw together a blink dagger quite yet. Even considering all the objectives and towers they've already taken down in the Roche, hasn't been able to pick up his mobility item. I know that they put a lot into the farm for Trouth, but I figured at least by now he'd be able to have at least a blink dagger. Yep, you are absolutely correct. We do see a battle of the titans back and forth. Yawar versus Anti-Mage doing a few hits there, and the Replicant actually expired. But the top lane is where the kill is going to be, and Brax popping the BKB. He can just keep oh. keep blinking, keep TPing, but fucking mad. We'll just buy out his item before he falls. MJW, just know where you can go, buddy. Sorry. Unleashes his call, and Mad's like, okay, let's fight. I don't need a TP. And with that, he gets dunked on, and I uh, Feared the worst if you had someone like Mad just kind of lingering around too long on that top lane and they end up paying the price. 23 to 28 here for game number five. The final match, the final series here for the NA qualifier. Demon steps back, returns to his farming pattern. Now he's got the perseverance. Is he going with the refresher buildup that we see sometimes here on your Demon Batrider Dota? Or is it really necessary to get something like a Lincoln's just to help out your AM? It's probably not a time to worry about your anti-mage anymore. Like, you can't invest in him for team fights. You have to just kind of do your own thing. You invest for the Refresher Orb for your Batrider to get the double last off. You invest in the Shadow Blade for the Witch Doctor to make sure that you can get that Death Ward off more often than not. Waning Rift, Earth Spike, and Berserker's Call can still cancel it even if they don't see you, but it's it's much more reliable. You are, they, well, they want to go for this two versus one play again in mid, but there's no Ice Blast, so yeah. But no, I, I actually think that you just kind of leave the animation to do his own thing. If he just split pushes, if he plays a Nature's Prophet for the next 10 minutes, that's fine. As far as actually fighting, you kind of have to just say you're on your own, man, and we're not going to throw a thousand buffs just to try to make you relevant. Yeah, and with that, he'll make sure he reserves a bit of it for the buyback because we could see an opportunity where E-Hug make the push happen and Fire have to invest a second lives or a buyback just to kind of make a square even mm -hmm. trade. Uh-oh, Mad gets Aren't caught again. Way I deep know. into enemy territory trying to get a ward down. But they had already pre-planted a couple of wards there, so they know exactly what's going on. They get the free and easy kill, and they hand over another sweet grab to MJW. 14, 1, and 6 on this axe. Absolutely ridiculous. Involved in 20 of the 29 kills right now for Eda. I guess the ward they want there is uh, two things. One, it's unexpected at this stage in the game to try to go and ward their plateau considering the general position on the map. And the other thing is it would give Antimage access to the Dire Jungle, which is something he hasn't really been able to benefit from, but for maybe, you know, a couple minutes at a time. Uh, they cross paths here. Ush gets spotted, and the coil's gonna be dropped. 
And with that, and him being in an Ags, he can't just safely pop his BKB, but he gets help now from Demon, who turns it around. A Blast will connect. Ooh, MJW. Got an air ball there. But Demon trying to make the getaway. Oh, not so uh, not so lucky, unfortunately. Tries to go with the Valiant TP, but help comes through in the form of both Infinity and UR, and your Batrider goes down. But Ush lives on and makes his way back to base. I think we're actually going to see the BKB picked up by Morphling. So the reason that this is really nice is because, of course, you are able to negate the Drunken Haze, which has been plaguing him all game long. You also get to avoid the mana break from the Anti-Mage and his illusions. So you won't be running out of mana all that quickly, and you just will be confident moving forward. But we'll see here oh. a lot of people up top, but the Death Ward wasted, and that's a big cooldown. I talked about how short it is in the draft, but it's not short enough for them to hold their high ground. That is... Heartbreaking right there for Fire. They try to get the easy grab on the Trout, but he has got the four staff and he gets out of there. Death Ward down, E Hug moving to the base. Mid lane tier three gonna go down, and even an AA blast to hit onto Brax. Do they re engage now at this point? Doesn't look like it. E Hug will walk away with their winnings and wait out for Roche to pop up, which is at about three seconds time, Blaze. So with that, E Hug are just on pace to putting a lid on this game in, in wonderful fashion. Having the extra life at their ready, it's going to take a serious high ground defense, and they better hope it doesn't come within the next 30 seconds because Matt is going to need that extra bit of time. He is still very angry with Trout, and he's trying to get a hold of him. He has been constantly hanging out this top lane. They are just trying their best to stall the game out and split push, it would seem. But with that, Roche goes down. Yawar is going to pick up that Aegis, and E-Hug head themselves back towards the mid lane. At this point in time, he's not going to be able to farm buyback for the remainder of the game. He has his Aghanim Shadowblade, that's all he can really hope for, so now he's just going on YOLO warding plays, and if he ever gets picked off, at least that's not five people down your mid lane. They're, they're going top to pick him off, so he's just trying to get the best thing he can, and he is closing on 16, but it looks like the game is going to be decided here within the next minute or two. All right, fire. They got to dig deep at this point to put up a high ground defense. E-Hug want to finish what they started. They look so good in this game number five, and they want to be able to finish out fire. Demon goes into fire flight mode. Yawar will step back as they kind of do a little of the uh, Muhammad Ali, a little bit of in and out play. Don't want to overcommit at any point. E-Hug are just kind of weighing a bit. Is there a given golden opportunity where E-Hug might look to breach the high ground here? Or do you uh, think Ice that... Blast connecting, they'll jump in. That's the bottom line. Oh, it connects on two. Big shot, and they got to step away. So it's either get involved with your Ice Blast or lose your Rax. Brax makes the jump in with his BKB, going to be popped. Ush goes in right behind, tries to get a hold of Ryuza. The Void's going to be there, but he might be dunked. Ush Jump goes down. Him. He's got to pull out his buyback at this point. Lasso's there. He's got the Refresher if he wants to do a second one, and will. Pulls him in. Death Ward, big damage. Tries to zone back the rest of the squad. Yuar could end up going down, but that's only his first life. Replicate puts him back in behind. And he is going to be in safe territory for now. But Brax tries to get persistent on moving back in. Ends up going down. Mad could fall next. And Fire begin to go one by one. There's the buyback from Brax. He's doing this without the split, mind you. And their Rax could end up going down. Yawar still happy with that Aegis. Dancing on just about 100 life. They can't finish him off. Brax goes in. This could be a dieback for him if he ends up going down. He gets the force to be saved. <laughs> they still can't get MJW in that big bounty. Fluff moves forward. Adaptive Strike going to be there. Fluff is going to be okay for now. There's the jump in. they able to take down Trout, but now Ush goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Yawar. And, well, Yawar goes back and will be able to finish off the Rex. MJW tries to make the dive onto Ush, and they get the Courier instead. E-Hug now move on to the next target to the top lane as they take down three. Brax dead. Die back for him as he will be out 90 seconds. Only Demon with no... Oh, one lasso. And Ush, the last survivors. Even a buyback coming out. Trout is sending an AA ult this way, I'm sure. But Ush on his last legs. He goes down. This might be it. It looks like E-Hug are going to be able to finish the one out. And they're going to be the NA qualifier winners. And going to the Malaysia land. It only a couple of racks away. They take down the second one. And this just might be a tough pill to swallow. Two death wards in this long-winded fight, but it's not going to be enough to keep them back, and the damage has been done. E-Hug, they just might have done it, Blaze. Yeah, they just might have. Going in for the bottom lane, we'll know for sure very soon. They're going to commit to this one here, and my goodness, what an amazing fight from E-Hug. There were some really good plays from Fire 2, picking up the Refresher, 
at the last possible moment, uh, and actually getting the double lasso on Morphin was huge. The Death Ward was not too shabby either, but it wasn't enough. In the end, E-Hug just had way too much going for them, and with that Aegis, they go right back. And you are, he had to mark a lot of strength, but the second he respawns, he's like, I don't need this health, goes right back down to a very high agility allocation, and now goes in for the tier fours. This is what they're looking for. Finishing the game here and now, Mega Creeps are up. The Throne is all that stands in their way, and the land invitation. Demon going for the big play, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah, grabs your war, wants that pesky, pesky kid, but it's not going to get done. Shrine is going to be attacked, and Fire can't do anything about it. They will be extinguished, put out, drowned, whatever you want to say. E hug. They are going to be your North American representatives here for the Fallout Gaming Major. Dota 2 All-Star event. They have secured their trip now to Malaysia and props to them. And also, of course, props to Team Fire. They had a good, solid run all the way through the bracket to this point. But unfortunately, it's just not enough. Both teams really sweated it out all the way to game number five. Couldn't ask for anything better, Blaze. But we have done it. <laughs> we have done it. Most definitely. It really is just uh, rising from NEL, going in with this pub stack mentality, and they have really become a team in these past few weeks. They have really shown what they can accomplish together, and I can't wait to see what they can accomplish over on a foreign soil. So we'll see, but for now it's been a tremendous victory for them and a tremendous series of games. Uh, I would recommend watching all of them because uh, there hasn't been a single EHA game that I was not just entirely impressed by a, a ton of their a performance, a ton of their decisions, and in the end, uh, they carry it, they take it away, and they deserve every minute of glory here. Yeah, a lot Good of people we'll uh, give a flack to some of these Tier 2 teams as if they might not be able to hold their own, but we'll see, and I sure enough will be rooting for E-Hug there in the majors to see if they could be like the next rave or the next, you know, team to really contest something like EG. It seems really far-fetched right now, but you can just see the talent is there. Props to MJW, props to Yawar. They are very, very talented players, and pretty much the whole squad. I mean, this was a team that kind of faltered a bit, but with these couple of new standards here, Trough and Yawar, they showed a lot of great skill. So we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Folks, thanks for coming by and hanging out. It was a pleasure casting and going all the way through the NA qualifier, but that wraps things up. With that, it was a pleasure. Beyond the Summit bringing you the coverage. We have more Fallout. Uh, majors actions coming your way. European Qualifier, China Qualifier are going to be coming up in the near future. And Beyond the Summit, we'll be bringing you the coverage. I, myself, Coddle Guy, show me some support over on my Twitter at Coddle Guy. Blaze, show him some love at Blaze Casting and our stats man at Cart Dota. Folks, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of the Dota. We'll see you next time.